Good day, Grade 12s. Welcome to this next lesson in mathematics. As you know, at the moment, we are busy preparing for Maths Paper 2. It's the IAB Maths Paper 2 on the 8th. Uh, what is it? The 15th of November. So we are going to be um, just going through paper two questions and these are all IB old paper two questions that we are busy going through right now. Um, right, so let's get stuck in. So it says complete the sentence that opposite angle of cyclic quad are supplementary. So this is quite an interesting concept because usually what they do is they ask you to state it or give you a definition and this is kind of their way of doing that type of thing and telling you that you're going to be needing that, needing the fact that the opposite angles of a cyclic quad are supplementary um, to solve this problem. Okay, so it's, it's basically them giving you a little hint. That's what they're doing right there. So let's have a look at it. It says in the diagram alongside, and you know what, I just want to make this a bit bigger. So let's just go back to this and make this bigger. And then go back here. There we go. It's much better. It says in the diagram alongside O is the center of the circle and SOP is OP is a straight line and QOT are straight lines and P is X. Okay. It says name with reasons two other angles each equal to X. Okay. So first of all, it's pretty obvious that this angle here is X Q1 because these are radii. I mean, these, this is the center of the circle. So that means that this is equal to this. These are radii. So that alone will tell you that that is X. So I would have said Q1 equals X. Um, and the reason is base angles of isosceles triangle, okay, and PO and OQ are radii. Okay, another angle that would equal X would be Q, a T1. T1 is equal to X, and the reason for that would be equal angle subtended by equal arc, by the same arc, okay? Do you see that P is subtended by QS, and if you take QS and you take it back up to the circumference, you can see it makes angle T1. So T1 is equal to X, and the reason for this would be equal angles, oopsie, sorry, angles subtended um, by same arc, okay? And then while we add it, I know only ask for two other angles, but we might as well do it. This is also radius and that's also radius. So therefore S1 is also equal to X. And you could either say base angles or isosceles triangle, or you could say equal angles subtended by same arc because Q1 and S1 are both subtended by PT. So you could say either of the reasons above and you would have got it right. Okay, now they say x equals 43 degrees. Determine with reasons the size of the following angles. Angle R. Okay, so didn't you remember that they told us that opposite angles are cyclic quad are supplementary? So we need to look for a cyclic quad. And do you see that if I look at the shape here, yeah, watch here, that's a cyclic quad. There it is. QPSR is a cyclic quad, which means that this angle here is 180 degrees minus X, okay? Because this is X, this is the opposite angle to it, so they are supplementary within the cyclic quad. So R equals 180 minus X, which is 180 degrees minus 43 degrees, which is 137 degrees. So XR equals 137 degrees. Let me just write it here, 137 degrees. Okay, and then we want O1, this angle here, O1. Okay, but O1 is subtended by PT, do you agree? And Q1 is also subtended by PT. So if O1 is subtended by PT and Q1 is subtended by PT, do you agree that you can say that angle at the center is twice the angle of the circumference? So O1 
angle O1 is two times angle Q1, okay, which is two times, what did they say it was? 43, which is going to be 86 degrees. And again, you would say angle at the center equals two times the angle at the circumference. Okay, right, so that was 86 degrees. Finally, they say, give a reason why PQ, PQ is parallel to TS. Ah, oh, I was waiting for something like that. Do you see that angle P is actually alternate to angle S1? So therefore, and they're equal, okay? So therefore, because they're equal and they're alternate, PQ has to be parallel to TS. Similarly, you could say Q1 is equal to T1, but they're alternate. Therefore, they have to be parallel. So let me write that. We can see that angle P is equal to X, which equals angle S1, and you would say proved above. Okay, therefore, uh, no, but, but, um, P is alternate to angle S1, therefore PQ must be parallel to TS, and that's how you would write it. Okay, not too bad, hey? Let's try next question. Okay, in the diagram, LR and MR are both tangents to the circle. So what do we know about LR and MR? They are equal in length. If you take any two lines that are tangent to the same circle and extend them so they cross, then those two lines are equal in length. Okay, so LR is equal to MR. Right, so LR and MR are tangents to circle L and M. RP, 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 is parallel to MN. Hmm, let me just get a little highlight out here. So we've got RP is parallel to MN. Okay, um, uh, and let me go back to pen. And then what else do they say? And N lies on the circumference. Okay, LPN is a straight line. Okay, and LMR equals 65 degrees. So that's 65 degrees. So it's proved that LP, LP, MR is cyclic quad. Okay, so you know what? After me highlighting, I've just decided I don't like it anymore. So let me rather just put them in a different color. So do you agree that P, R is parallel to N, M? And now they want us to prove, let's use green, that LP, M, okay, LP, M, R, M, R, is a cyclic quad. They want us to prove this is a cyclic quad. Okay, so let's think about this. What do we know about cyclic quads? Cyclic quads, the way we prove them is you can either prove that the exterior angle, angle equals the inter opposite angle, or we can prove, in other words, exterior angle equals the interior opposite, or we can prove that opposite angles are supplementary. Or we can do the subtending thing. We can say that angles are subtended by the same arc. Angles are subtended. Okay, so we've been given this angle here of 65 degrees. Okay. We also know that this angle here is 65 degrees because of base angles of an isosceles triangle. Hmm. What else do we know? It says in the diagram, L, R, and M are tangents to the circle L, M is, okay. Then we know that, oh, there we go. We know that this angle here is 65 degrees because of the tan chord theorem, okay. So we know that that is 65 degrees. Okay, does it help me at all? Okay, hang on, let me look. <clears throat> so hang on, in the diagram L and M are tangents to circle, RP is parallel, okay, that means that this angle there is 65 degrees, and there we go, we've got it. Okay, let me show you how we've got it. Okay, so 
we have got that we didn't even need this one. Um, let me show you to make it even easier for you. We didn't even need that. Okay, do you agree that they gave us that LMR equals 65 degrees? Do you agree? So therefore, using the tan chord theorem, I could say that, well, in that case, MNL is 65 degrees. So I could say LNM equals 65 degrees because the tan chord theorem. Okay, because here is your tangent, there's your R, M is your tangent, and LM is your tangent, and LM sub Ted's N. So therefore, this is your 65 degrees, okay? But they also tell us that PR is parallel to NM, which means that this angle here, angle LPR, is equal to 65 degrees. And why is that? That's alternate angles where PR is parallel to NM, right? But check this out. Angle LPR and angle LMR are both subtended by LR. So therefore, we can say that this is a cyclic quad. Okay, so we can say that this is equal to LMR. Okay, but LPR and LMR are both subtended by LR. Therefore, LPMR is a cyclic quad. Hmm. Okay, so now we've proven that's a cyclic quad. Right, excellent. It says, new question. Given triangle ABC, ABC with D on a point, such that DE is parallel to BC, and F on the point such that AB is parallel to FE, Given that DE is 15 and EF, EF is 20, and EC is 30 and AE is 20, give with reasons X and Y. First of all, let's find X and Y. There is X and there's Y. Okay, so this is obviously looking at ratio and proportion, right? Do you agree? So if that's the case, we need to look at this ratio here. Yeah. Do you agree that this is a ratio of 20 to 30? So this would be 20 to 30. Okay, this is 20 to 30. So do you agree that this would be a ratio of, if I'm looking at triangle ABC, and I'm looking at the fact that this line EF splits it on a ratio of 2 to 3, then I could say, well, if that's the case, then if this is Y, do you agree that this side here is going to be 2 over 3Y? Okay, I'm just bear with me for a second. So this is 2 over 3Y, right? If this is Y, then this is going to be 2 thirds of Y. Okay, um, how do I get that? Well, if this is three, then I'm saying that, okay, let's, put, let's, let's do it another way. Let me show you another way so I can show you how to do this. Let's call this little side here Z. Okay, so we're saying Z to Y, Y is a ratio of two to three. Therefore, if we flip it, we can say that y over z is a ratio of 3 to 2. Um, no, no, let's leave it there. No, sorry, let's not flip it. So therefore, do you agree that z, z is going to be 2 thirds of y? And that's what I got that. So that's 2 thirds of y. Okay, so from there to there is two thirds of y. Okay, so now that is the ratio of that to that. So 
so it's two thirds y to y. But now, if you look at this, you can see that this ratio is also going to be 15. Um, it's also going to be a ratio of, of 15 to 2 to 3. Okay, so in other words, if I look at this, this ratio here um, is going to be this ratio from 15 to that is going to be a ratio of 2 to 3. Okay, do you see that? So therefore I can say, well, in that case, um, the ratio of this, okay, DE over the ratio of BC is going to be a ratio of 2 to 3, right? But now DE is 15. So it's 15 over BC is going to be E ratio of 2 to 3, right? So do you agree that 15 is equal to two thirds of BC. So to get BC, what I need to do, I need to say that 15, it's 15 times by three divided by two. So the whole of this, the whole of this is going to equal 15 times by three is 45 divided by two is 22.5, I think. Let me just check. So let's clear it. Um, so it's 15 times 3 equals divided by 2. Yeah, it is 40. So that is 22.5. So the whole of that is 22,5. That's the ratio. Okay. So we're saying that 22,5 is equal to y plus 2 over 3y. Do you agree? It's equal to this y plus that bit there. Okay, so therefore we can say, well, in that case, um, we've got that 22,5 is equal to 5 over 3y, because this is actually the same as saying 3 over 3, right? So therefore y is going to be 22,5 times by 3 over 5. Okay, are you with me? Another way, oh wait, there's an easier way of doing this. Wait, sorry, sorry, there's a way easier way of doing this. Okay, do you agree that we said, I'm, I'm agreeing, I'm, uh, let's just make this much easier for everybody to understand. Sorry, I think I overcomplicated it for you. So you don't need that either. You just need this bit, two thirds of y. So do you agree that we said that this is two over three y? But this thing here is a parallelogram. B, D, E, F is a parallelogram. So therefore this has to be equal to each other, okay? So therefore we can say that two over three y is equal to 15, right? Therefore y is going to be equal to 15 times by 3 over 2, which is 22,5, which is exactly what we got before, but now at least you can see it's much easier. So this bit here is 22,5. There we go. And this bit here is 15. Similarly, this length here is going to be 20 centimeters. So we know, sorry, so we know that y is 22,5 centimeters. Do you agree? So now this bit there is 20 for the simple reason that it is a parallelogram as well. But now we need to look at exactly the same triangle, but now we're looking at it being split a different way. So again, we're looking at a ratio of two to three, okay? But now this, we're gonna again call, uh, let's call this P, okay? So this is going to be X over P is a ratio of two, to three, do you agree? So therefore, do you agree that X is going to be two over three multiplied by P, but P is 20 because of the fact that this is a parallelogram. So therefore X is two thirds of 20, which is gonna be 40 over three. And if we just pop that in our calculator, we get 40, divided by three, which is going to be, it uses 13.33. So therefore X is going to be 13,33 centimeters. 
And there you go. So that's how you can work out the values of X and Y. So it's 13,33 centimeters. Okay, so don't be too scared about funny fractions, okay? Don't panic about that. All you're looking at is a ratio of 2 to 3 and the fact that you already know this length, so it makes it a bit easier to work it out. Okay, now it says, if theta, 2 theta, and 3 theta are the angles of a triangle, evaluate without the use of a calculator cos squared theta plus cos squared 2 theta plus cos squared 3 theta. Okay, so let's just think about this. So we are saying that we've got three angles. We've got theta, we've got 2 theta, and we've got 3 theta. And these make up the angles of a triangle. So how many thetas do we have therefore? Do you agree that this makes up six thetas? So six theta is equal to 180 degrees. So do you agree that the theta is going to be 180 divided by six, which equals 30 degrees? So this thing here really says cos squared 30 plus cos squared 60 plus cos squared 90. That's what it's really asking you to do, okay? So now all we need is our two, our special triangle, which says 60, 30, to one root three. So cos is, remember, adjacent to our part two, hypotenuse, you've got Sarkatoa, cos is adjacent of our partner so we're looking at cos of 30 which is the adjacent side is root 3 over that partner is 2 so this is root 3 over 2 all squared plus cos squared 60 again we're looking at adjacent of our partner so this is 1 over 2 all squared plus now cos 90 if you remember your cos graph, your cos graph does this. It goes la 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 la. That there is 90. So cos of 90 is zero. So that's just a big fat zero. Like it doesn't matter if it's squared, it's still zero. So root three squared is just three over two squared is four plus one over four, which is four over four, which is one. There you go. I've evaluated without the use of calculator. So this is kind of sneaky because they, because of the fact that they tell you that these are angles of triangle, we can find the value of theta. When you first look at this question, you think you need to be doing compound angles and things, but it's not. Okay, so it's a nice question, that. Right, evaluate without the use of a calculator. Sine 124, sine 64, sine 214, sine 26. Okay, they're not saying you can't use a calculator to subtract things from 180 degrees or whatever, but they don't want you to be trying to find out um, what sine of 214 is on your calculator. That's what they're saying. So do you agree that this would be the same as sine of 180 minus what? Okay, I'll show you. It's going to be sine of 180 minus 64 equals 116. That's interesting. Okay, so it's sine of, um, I can't be, I'm being an idiot. I made a mistake. Yeah, I thought so. So it is going to be 106. No, it's going to be, it's going to be. Let's try again, shall we? 180 minus 64. Oh, oh, oh. Minus 64 equals 116. Oh, I don't want to do that. I want to do minus 124. No wonder I get, keep getting this wrong. 180 minus 124 equals 56 is better. So minus 56, okay, it gives you that. This is sine of 64 plus sine of what? What is 214 minus 180? So this is 214 minus 180 
equals 34. So it's sine 34 and then it's sine 26. Okay, so do you agree that if we look at our cast diagram, all stations to Cape Town, sine of 180 minus 56 is in the second quadrant. Um, let me just fix this. Sorry, I made a mistake. I'm not very happy with that. Let me just fix it. That is sine of 180 plus 34. It's better. Sine 26. So this becomes, sorry, so this is in the second quadrant. So that's still positive. So that's sine 56, sine 64 plus. Sine of 180 plus 34 is in the second is in the third quadrant. That's negative. So it's minus sine 34, sine 26. Hmm. Okay. So now let's have a look at this. So we've got sine 56, sine 64. Okay. So they aren't similar at all. Um, let me just think of something. Um, if you take nine minus 90, 90, that's 56. Excellent. So this becomes sine 56, sine 64, but 64. But if you put 34 into your calculator and subtract it from 90, you get 56. So first of all, plus times minus is a minus. And then sine is co-ratio of cos. So this becomes cos 56. And sine 26 is the co-ratio of cos of 64. So now you can see that we've got this thing that says sine, sine, cos, cos, okay? And now all we need to do is work out what the mathematical relationship is. And we've got it on the formula sheet. It says if you've got sine, sine, cos, cos, okay, with a minus in between it, that sign becomes a positive, okay? And you need to understand that we need to switch this around because it should actually be reading cos 56, cos 64, and then we're going to take out a minus and then it becomes plus sine 56, sine 64. Okay, it's better. And then what happens is this becomes minus because it's cos, cos, sine, sine with a plus that changes. It becomes cos of A minus beta. So it becomes 64 minus 56, which becomes negative cos of what is 64 minus 56? Eight. Yeah, that's actually supposed to be, if you leave the minus there, it becomes a positive. So therefore, so therefore it becomes, let me just fix this. This becomes, stays a minus, and this becomes cos, of 120 degrees, right? But that is the same as that's in this quadrant. So it becomes negative cos 60 degrees. And then we have to use our special triangle and that's 60, 30, 2, 1, root 3. 60 is of cos is adjacent of our part and use that so becomes negative a half. Yeah, sorry about that. That should have stayed a minus. Okay, right. Let's move on. That says prove the following identities. They want us to prove that 3 cos 2 theta plus cos theta minus 2 divided by 3 sine 2 theta minus 5 sine theta is equal to cos theta plus 1 over sine theta. Okay. 
So obviously we're going to play with the left hand side. Remember when improving your identities, you can't go around messing with both sides or you can't, you can go around messing with both sides, but you can't assume that they're equal and then work from there. You have to work with either the left hand side or the right hand side at one point in time. Okay, so you've got left hand side. You got three cos two theta plus cos theta minus two all over. 3 sine 2 theta minus 5 sine theta. Okay, so I know that cos 2 theta can be cos squared theta minus sine squared theta, which can also be 1 minus 2 sine squared theta, which can also be 2 cos squared theta minus 1. Now, all of this, but this is cos theta, and this is a number, and this is in cos thetas. So I'm going to change my cos 2 theta to the third one, okay? So therefore, it becomes 3 multiplied by 2 cos squared theta minus 1 plus cos theta minus 2 all over sine 2 theta becomes 2 sine theta cos theta, am I right? It becomes 3, and it's 2 sine theta cos theta minus 5 sine theta. Okay. No, wait. Yes, that's right. Actually, no. Sorry. That is is not in the bracket, it's only this bit over here that's in the bracket. So let's just go, and only this bit's in the bracket. Okay, so let's multiply that out. That becomes six cos six, cos squared theta minus three, plus cos theta minus two, all over. This becomes six sine theta cos theta, minus 5 sine theta. Okay, so let us add up all the like terms and get this in a nice order. So it becomes 6 cos squared theta plus cos theta minus 5 all over. And yet, do you agree that I could take out a common factor of sine theta? So I'm taking out sine theta and I'm left with 6 cos theta minus 5. Okay, so you can see that this is definitely a trinomial. You've got 6 cos squared theta plus cos theta minus 5. And yeah, I've taken out a common factor of sine theta, which makes me happy because here is a sine theta. And we left with 6 cos theta minus 5, which makes me feel that maybe, Hopefully, this will work out to be a factorization that will give me the same thing up here. So we need to factorize this, okay? So if we factorize this, we've got factors of cos, um, we've got 6 and 1 and 3 and 2, and my factors of the 5 are just 5 and 1. Okay, that's it, and one and five. We want there to be a positive in the positive one in the middle, and we want it to have different signs, okay? So if we have a look at this, three times one and two times five do not work. Two times five is 10 and three times one is does not work. Three times five is 15, so three and two definitely don't work. 6 times 1 is 6, and 1 times 5 is 5, and if I go plus 6 minus 5, I get the correct answer. Therefore, this is going to be 6 cos theta minus 5, and then it's going to be cos theta plus 1 all over sine theta 6 cos theta minus 5, and we just get to cancel, and we end up with the right-hand side, and we're like, yay, we're amazing, life is awesome, fantastic. Now, I know that a lot of my students would say things like along the lines of, I would never have thought of that, or 
this is beyond me. It is not beyond you. And you could have thought of that because all that we did was go through the basic steps. We converted the three cos two theta, the cos two theta into one of these three. We converted the sine two theta into the only thing it can be changed in. And then all we did was we followed the basic principles of mathematics and mathematical rules. So don't be freaked out when you see something a little bit that looks a little bit complicated like this. Right, now it says find the general solution of tan theta equal, tan five theta is equal to tan theta. I just want to see something. Yeah, okay. So we've got tan five theta, okay, minus tan theta is equal to zero. Or we can go tan 5 theta over tan theta is equal to 1. But I'm, I'm, I'm liking this one more. Um, hmm. Okay, I'm going to think about this one and we can do it tomorrow because it's going to take a little bit of time. We've only got three minutes of this lesson left. So what I'm going to do is rather have a look at this question now and then we'll come back to this question tomorrow, okay? So it says, refer to the sketch below. Triangle PTO is drawn with T on a point to the negative axis. This point is minus 4, 3. So this is obviously negative 4, 0. Okay, because the x value is negative 4. And y of p is theta. It says use the diagram to determine sine of 90 plus theta minus cos of 90 minus theta. Okay, so do you agree that if that's theta, then this is theta over here because it's alternate angles, and this is 90, and this is 90 minus theta, just for the record. Okay, and do you agree that but I could therefore say that if this is negative 4 and this is 3 long, then this is going to be 5. So therefore we've got our Sokotoa going. And we need to find the determine the value of sine of 90 plus theta minus cos of 90 minus theta. So sine of 90 plus theta is going to equal negative cos theta because 90 plus theta is a co-ratio of cos theta, but it's in the second quadrant, all stations to Cape Town, which means that cos is negative. So it's negative cos theta minus sine theta, okay, because cos of 90 minus theta, the co-ratio of that is sine theta. So the cos becomes minus cos theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's 3 over 5, minus sine theta, which is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, so that's going to be negative 4 over 5, so that's minus 3 over 5 plus 4 over 5, which is going to be 1 over 5. There you go. Not too difficult, hey? Right, great tools. Unfortunately, that's where we end for today. We will carry on with this tomorrow, and I promise to come back to this fairly long question of five, tan 5 theta is equal to tan theta. Have a great evening. Cheers.